Hello everybody, welcome back to how to build a B1 bomber. Guess what? My fuselage plug is finished. It is smooth and it is shiny. I got all my panel lines on there. It's looking pretty good. Remember when I put that tape on my windshield and covered it up and then just kept on priming? Now I got me a nice little lip all the way around. And that'll transfer to my mold and transfer onto my parts. Got all my camp panel lines on. They don't like to show up too good with a camera. But I'll go over it and try and show it all to you. There's where the, the window for the guys in the back. That's their ejection capsule lid. And more panel lines. And uh, we took a piece of thin cardboard and kind of bent it around these edges. And that's how we got them so straight. And uh, they're looking pretty good. I'm impressed myself. But uh, I didn't get mine to sell finished. I figured I would wait until I'm, when I'm molding on this, I'm going to have lots of time in between when I'm waiting for epoxy to dry. I'll work on that then. And if you can notice, I didn't cut the tail, nose off or the tail. I decided not to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parting plane. That's just a piece of wood that comes around here and fits perfectly. I'll cut it out of that 4x4 four four sheets of Halex. That is a five layer plywood that uh, we use for uh, underlayment for like vinyl and stuff. But it's like a five ply plywood just like you get at the hobby shop. And see it's not flat, it's perfectly flat. It's not warped. It's five layer plywood about $17 a sheet that is nice stuff then I got once I get my planes cut I'll cover them with that formica and that is a really smooth formica and that'll make a really nice edge but once I get part of my parting planes done I'll make another video and explain how we did it so everyone can see but I want to go over a couple things with you guys stuff I'm getting questions about is how did we come up with our scale to do all this measuring okay that is real simple we took the length of our plastic model everything is based on that plastic model you cannot do a project like this without one that is how you start these projects so we took the length of our plastic model and divided it into the length of our bomber and that measurement comes out to 6.027 so everything we do everything we measure off there we times times 6.027 see on our deal where we on our bottom where we did most of our measuring from was these two points and uh, the first thing you know we drew a line across there which uh, there's actually a panel line there already but we drew a line across there so we wouldn't get confused and the first thing we did was we checked it on our plug. So we took this measurement, times it by 6.027, and it worked out perfect. It just came out perfect. I was shocked on how accurate that was. But it measured perfect. So that's how we came up with our 6.027. And uh, I had a lot of questions when we was building our wood ones. Yes, we have built a lot of wood airplanes. It just so happens my buddy Butch hooked us up with this phone thing, and I, I sure thank him for it. He saved us a whole lot of work, plus it looks really good. But how we go about doing that is first we decide how big we want the model. Okay, say we want this model, just hypothetically, 12 foot. Okay, well, we convert that to inches, and then we decide how far we want them bulkheads apart. Okay, a lot of people was asking, well, how do you know where to put the bulkheads? Well, we decide where we want the bulkheads. So let's just say we want them bulkheads four, four inches apart. We take 144 inches divided by four equals 36. And then we come to our plastic model, and we measure it. And let's just, to make this easy, let's just say it's 36 inches long. Okay, that makes it one every inch on our plastic model, there's a bulkhead. Now, Dad, he can just take his calipers and come along where we made our mark in different spots and it times everything, times 6.027, and come up with a perfect bulkhead. 
there's easier ways to do that. Uh, you can come in here with a bandsaw and cut everywhere you want to put a bulkhead. And uh, draw them out on a piece of paper. Just take that and lay it down, draw it on a piece of paper. Take it to Kinko's and have them blow it up. And uh, that's how you can get all your bulkheads. And say you want to put foam in the middle. Well, it's hard to find four inch foam. So you can take your bulkheads and take them down to three inches. Whatever the thickness of your foam is, is uh, how far apart you want to put your bulkheads. And you can put your bulkheads in there and take your hot wire, cut around your bulkheads, or a bandsaw, anything, and then sand them smooth and come up with a pretty nice plug that way too. And uh, my conversion chart. I cannot do this without this thing. I love this conversion chart. But I'm going to show you how this works. Say, say we want to take a measurement from here to here. Okay, let's just hypothetically say it's an inch and three eighths. Okay, we come to our calculator, we type in one inch. Well, you can't really do three eighths on there, so you come over here on your conversion chart and you find three eighths of an inch, and that is 0.375. So it's one inch. 0.375 times 6.027 and it comes we come up with 8 inches so we can write that down now we got 287 we come back to our conversion chart and we find 2 then the closest thing to 287 we got 281 and 296 we want to go ahead and take it down to the nearest eighth inch. We don't need to go 64 or 30 seconds or nothing like that. So it's 20, uh, 20 point 25. So it's 8.25. Or it's 8 and a quarter. I'm sorry. 8 and a quarter is our calculation. And that's just how simple it is. You can probably get these off the internet. I'm not sure where Dad got it. It's just a reference table. Table. It's a decimal equivalence of fractions of an inch. Dad can do this stuff in his head. <laughs> Me, I need this piece of paper. This piece of paper is like a like gold. But I got all my sanding and prime and stuff put away, and pulled out the part all. And I'm getting ready to start. There's my mold release I'm going to use. I love this part all. There's kind of a trick to doing it, using part all. Your first coat has got, got to be a lot of air pressure and a little bit of, you just want to barely miss it, just just a little bit. You let that dry completely. It dries fast, five minutes, ten. And then hit it with another mist coat. You want to try and build it up slowly. If you try and get too much, that stuff just looks terrible. You'll get fish eyes because this is full of, because we got this wax so good. You'll end up with a lot of fish eyes and and it just won't look good at all. But you put it on in, in, in mist coats until you get a nice layer down. Then you can throw a wet one on there. And then it just looks like a sheet of glass. It's really nice. And another thing that's important is to use good wax. I'm going to use 100% Carnuba paste wax. I haven't got it yet, but I'm going to the auto parts store right after I make this movie. I'm going to put like three or four good coats of wax on this. So we don't want nothing sticking. I don't do not want parts sticking on my plug. I've got way too much work in this thing to uh, start over. So that all comes down to your wax. You're really wanting a good coat of wax and uh, you need to do some practicing with that part all before you go. But the good thing about that part all, it is water soluble. You mess up, all you got to do is take a sponge and wipe it off. It's really cool stuff. Once you get it on here, you can scrub it with lacquer thinner. It won't touch it. With just a drop of water, it just melts. It's pretty neat stuff. So if you do mess up, all you got to do is take a sponge, wipe it off, do it again. And uh, that's what I like about it. But there we are. My plug is finished, and it's looking good, folks. I am impressed with myself. <laughs> but uh, I'll make another movie when I get all my parting planes in there. I'm going to have one this way and one that way one that way and one that way. Next I'll be able to work on different sections all at the same time. And uh, that'll speed the process along and I can get a little waiting for my epoxy to dry. I can work on some of these other parts and uh, make this thing, this project move along 
And I want to thank everyone for all your support. I'm just, just, I don't know what to say. Uh, you guys keep me, keep me motivated and uh, makes this thing go along a lot further. And I want to thank my dad and my friends. I want to confess, I've had some friends coming over to help me sanding. And uh, it's really made this project move along. You get a couple buddies over here with a sanding block and this really goes fast. You know, uh, we all we all need our buddies like that. But uh, that's where we're at, and uh, I want to thank everybody and wish you good luck on your projects. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to help anyone out. And uh, we will see you in the shop.